Hello, McDoyers Football Fan TV. This is the final word from Republic of Ireland, nil, Wales, nil in the UEFA Nations League, our third UEFA Nations League group game, or league game, if you rather. And it comes off the back of, obviously, losing to Slovakia penalties the other night, which is a devastating blow to our chance, well, to us playing in the Euro 2020 Championship in Dublin in June. But I suppose the talk really was all about on Sunday morning, after we did our preview with um, Lawrence from Welsh football fans, we had to, well, I, I had to get, get going from that point and I was going to the match at the Aviva and then all these you know, revelations were coming out about a player testing positive and then we had players that were close contacts of these players. You had Callum O'Dowd, Callum Robinson, John Egan, um, Alan Brown was the other one, I think, as well. And it kind of, it wreaked havoc on the squad, didn't it? I mean, I felt sorry for Stephen Kenny because you're looking at the squad, not a whole lot was left, you know, especially because Adam Eda was gone, Aaron Connolly was gone. Although we still had good players in there, you could, you could say we still have Premier League players to come in there. It was a bit of a depleted squad, but what were your thoughts when you kind of seen all this coming out? Because it didn't come out till about so, uh, probably about 11 on, on Sunday morning. Yes. Yeah, so I... Yeah, so I, I only found out when, as you said, when we it, it, it didn't it, it might have broken near the end of when we were doing the show live, um, or maybe it just broke afterwards. I found out after the show, and I've been saying in the show, I think maybe we get a draw, and it was I thought we had a good chance of getting a draw, but it was a bit apprehensive because Wales are probably ahead of us in their development, etc. And my first reaction was, oh no, we were already missing so many players. Um, even before the squad went to Slovakia, we lost the likes of Seamus Coleman, we lost Daryl Lenehan, we had James McCarthy out as well after Thursday. Uh, we lost Aaron Connolly, we lost Adam Ida. And uh, so then to lose the lads, I thought, oh no, this, I just, I thought we were going to lose and I was afraid we were going to get hammered. Um, so. <laughs> The lineup. Um, I, I don't think Stephen had much choice with the lineup. I don't think it's the one he would have picked, uh, particularly when so yeah, well, many players had played 120 minutes and also penalties. You know. Well, we'll go through the lineup here because um, we can we can then talk through it after because I think there was a couple of surprises there because, well, I think the surprises maybe other people don't, but the fact that Shane Duffy started and stuff like that, I thought maybe he would rest them. But anyway, Darren Randolph in goal. Again, if it's a friendly, he probably plays Mark Travers, I think. But, you know, Darren's Darren and, and, and you can rely on him in these games. And the Stevens, Shane Duffy, Kevin Long came in for John Egan because he was obviously a close contact um, of the player who, who is unnamed still um, for testing for COVID, test positive. Doherty, uh, Roy Full, again, that was a bit of a shock to me because he looked like he'd carried an injury even though he took the penalty and unfortunately missed. But, um, I thought I thought he would actually be rested too, but so I was surprised to see him start. But I wasn't unhappy, you know. If he's fit enough to play, he should always be in the lineup, regardless. Um, Connor Howran, Jeff Hendrick, Jason Malumbi, uh, Robbie Brady, Shane Long, and James McLean was the starting lineup. So what what were your thoughts? Because you were obviously watching on the watch along with Jer. I was at the game. I seen the lineup. It went out about twelve forty five, and um, when I seen Malumbi in the lineup, I was quite happy because I felt as though. He didn't do anything wrong last month. He did look very tired, but he definitely put all that to bed there yesterday. But anyway, uh, what were your thoughts when you kind of seen that that lineup? Yeah, I, I didn't think Stephen had a huge amount of choice given the way the squad was depleted. Um, I, I wouldn't, given what was available. I suppose my my first thought was I was hoping Jack Byrne would get a run and, and get a start. I know I mentioned that afterwards as well. I thought it was, it was the ideal chance uh, to, to give Jack his chance in a competitive game or at least to get a run off the bench for the last half an hour, particularly as he's, as we've said before, he's someone who can pick out a pass, who can score a goal himself. You know, I'd like to see him at, at this level. So, but otherwise, I mean, I was actually quite happy with, with the lineup. The, the interesting ones I found was Robbie Brady on the right of the attack. And uh, obviously cutting in a lot on his left foot. Uh, no, maybe maybe that was just by necessity that he had James, who James McLean, who had to probably always plays on the left as well. So um, maybe just it wasn't a choice, or maybe it was Stephen trying something out. 
Um, Shane Long obviously is a, an interesting choice uh, for striker, uh, but again, uh, probably, well, it was down to Shane Long, I suppose, or, or Sean Maguire um, for for Stephen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can say you're surprised by Shane Duffy. Yeah, he he probably would have liked to have rested Shane, probably liked to have rested a few of the others as well, but. I suppose he didn't have any any real choice, and and unfortunately the players having played 120 minutes and the penalty shootout on Thursday had to go out on Sunday, and it's it's to their credit that they actually um, certainly performed. And as far as I'm concerned, we played really well. I mean, it wasn't a perfect performance by any means, but um, yeah, I, I in general I think there wasn't much choice with the lineup, and had we known everything, uh, even. Even an hour before the lineup was announced, I think we'd probably have come up with much of it something similar, given the players that were available. Yeah, well, as you mentioned there, like we, we had actually said it on the preview uh, that we would like to have seen Jack Byrne in there uh, because I I had assumed that he was going to rest a lot of players, but maybe I was kind of looking at it more in a friendly sense, and Stephen was obviously looking at it in the right aspect and seeing this game as a competitive game to try and get ourselves, you know. It's somewhat of a good position in the group. Anyway, uh, Kevin Long came in at centre-back, which I was happy to see as well because obviously John Egan was, was out due to being a close contact of uh, the, the player who tested positive. But um, I think he I think he done well. He obviously went off quite early, but the first 15 minutes, you know, it was a very slow start. There was nothing really going for, for either team. And, and, and the game just kind of started getting a bit lively when I think it was more collided with Long and then not long after he went off and he was actually uh, replaced by Cyrus Christie and Matt Doherty went to left centre-back which I was a bit surprised but like as soon as he was down I seen Stephen Kenny calling Shane Duffy over and then next minute Matt Doherty pulled in at centre-back and to be honest I didn't think he looked out of place at centre-back No, um, no I actually did didn't realise it. We were saying it on the watch along. Um, I, I've since discovered afterwards that Matt actually played at centre back at school by level. Um, I didn't know that at the time. He certainly he didn't look out of place at all. He he played really well. And also credit to Shane Duffy, who, as you said, uh, Stephen called him over because he certainly, um, let's say, helped Matt through it and coached him through it. And um, uh, I don't. Maybe it would have been a lot more obvious to you. Maybe in the stadium, it was Shane kind of talking to him, telling him where to go and off the ball stuff and everything like that. Um, so it um, it worked. I mean, it's not something I don't. I think. Look, we actually are blessed with a reasonably uh, good number of of quality centre backs. So I don't think it's something we're we're going to see again. Um, certainly not Matt playing as part of a two at the back. Um, uh, but he certainly didn't go out of place and certainly didn't let us down. And there was another interesting theory. I, I know I actually mentioned this and a few people have talked about maybe to get as a way of getting Matt and Seamus Coleman in the team would be to play three at the back. And I think nearly all of us were talking about Seamus as the third of the three. But, um, well, maybe Matt now is an option for that as well. It's funny how football works like that. But I think Darren Randolph was actually the one who was speaking to him a lot. For, the one I could hear. Maybe Duffy's just okay. not that not that loud from, from up where I was sitting. But um, they actually had a chance not long after that with Wilton. And he forced a nice save from Darren Randolph. And that's when the game kind of got a bit lively. You know, Not long after that, Wilson actually gives the ball away. I think it's, it was Robbie Brady who gave it to, you know, in, in their half. And he ran at the defence right to the edge of the box and fired a left foot strike over the bar, which Shane Long was kind of running to a point where he had opened a gap that maybe he could have slid him in, but he was right to take the shot. It was just a shame that it went over the bar. Yeah, so we had, um, I suppose we had a number of efforts that went kind of just off target, you know, um, uh, Robbie Brady had a, a great effort, just, just shaved the, the um the top corner i mean it was very nearly went into the top corner just went wide at the post as well um that was the one so yeah so he was only was over the bar then it was just um just well, it looked like it was over the bar from where i was okay. sitting. i didn't all right i think it went just i think it went just wide and there wasn't there wasn't too much in that and uh okay. 
and I think was it Cyrus Christie had an effort as well. Yeah, that, that's uh, a strike over the bar. Yeah. Quite as well. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we had um, we had a few efforts. We didn't actually manage an effort on target in the first half, despite probably dominating quite a bit of the play. And uh, but I I was very happy with the performance because we did take the take no in in parts. I mean, we can go on and talk about the the lack of goals, but we did take. We did take the game to them, and uh, we we did play well as well, and we did pass the ball very well, and uh, uh, there were certainly a lot of positives to take from the from the first half performance and and the game as a whole. Yeah, well, let's talk about that because I felt as though Jason Malumbi was running the show in midfield, and he wasn't doing anything glamorous, but what he did and done effectively was. He was always looking for the ball and he, he's one of these players that will get us up the pitch because he can carry the ball. Whereas not a lot of our players can can get the ball and carry it up the pitch. And I felt as though almost at times there'd be players like Robbie Brady who loves hogging the ball that much that he kind of slows us down a little bit, I think, because he does it with Matt Doherty as well. When Matt Doherty gives him a ball up the line and goes on the overlap. Brady, for some reason, loves to do this thing where he turns around, he'll hold on to the ball and he'll wait, 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 and look for a ball. And then he'll look for it back. And then he'll just whip it into the box. We think sometimes he, he, he'd he be better off getting the ball and just giving it to that um, overlapping player. Because like, there was times where Malumbi, I felt as though if he had just kept running, I think maybe with a few games under his belt, he might start doing it. Is where He just might run with the ball and not, not worry what the senior lads kind of think. Because a lot of the time when he had the ball, you could hear Robbie Brady just screaming at him to pass it to him. And he wasn't really in great positions. And I felt as though Malumbi only kind of gave him the ball and did exactly what he was told by his fellow professionals just to keep them happy, you know? Yeah, a couple of, couple of good points there. Um, the, the thing about Robbie playing, I mean, Robbie clearly favours his left foot and he is a beautiful left foot. Uh, but the thing about playing on the right is he's not going to get down the line. So you, you can get some issues then on the... Uh, obviously, if, the, if Matt Doherty, the fullback, or, or Cyrus Christie, as it became, is going to overlap, then you really have to let them go down the line because I don't think Robbie's going to go down the right wing and then whip in across with his right foot too often. Um, well, Jason Mumby, Jer and myself both picked our man of the match. And we, actually, the one from the Aviva didn't come up. We didn't know. Both of us picked Jason Mumby, and I don't think it was even in doubt. I. Like you and Jerry, Jerry agreed as well. Thought he had a superb game, and his energy and he just got around the pitch so much, and he brings so much energy and exuberance and uh, power and everything to the game and to the team. It's um, it was great to see, and uh, I think he's he looks like he's got he's to the manner born, and he's going to be here for a long time in our midfield. It's going to be very hard to leave him out after a performance like that. I don't think Stephen will. I don't think he can. Um, and and he, he, Watching him come through in the under-21s, he certainly looked like one for the future, and he had a fantastic season with Millwall on loan last season. His first cap against Finland, uh, I think the game in many ways passed him by. It's not to say he did too badly against Finland, but he, he didn't certainly stand out or really perform, but without doubt, I thought... Um, he had a superb game, and he, I think you probably agree as well, all three of us, that he was the man of the match, and he was actually picked as the the man of the match as well. So I think virtually everyone was in agreement, and hopefully, I think it looks like we've found uh, one for the future, without doubt now. Well, do you think now, if you kind of look at it, and people were saying that Howrahim was anonymous and stuff like that, but I just thought Howrahan slotted into James McCarthy's role, I thought, quite well. And kind of, while he wasn't glamorous, he was able to drop in as a, like a third centre-back almost at times and pick out passes and stuff like that. So it allowed like Malumbi to get forward and not really have to worry about the defensive side of things. I think he's played that position a couple of times for Villa. But I think he is a, he's a decent option to have there now instead of James McCarthy, if anything does ha- obviously happen to James and then Howerton stepped in to show maybe Howerton what the kind of energy we need in midfield to kind of get around. While Connor is brilliant at free kicks and, and everything like that, I think he needs to kind of bring more to the team. And I think maybe just Malumbi has that, has, has those legs. Obviously, Hendrick gets around the pitch and stuff like that. 
and is athletic and stuff like that. But I wish maybe Jeff could do a bit more in terms of like what Chase does, be you know, becoming an option, getting the ball and looking again. Because there was a couple of times, even Malumbi in the second half, I remember getting into the box and he, he got a he got a bit of a rush of blood a couple of times and went for the strike because you could see he just really wanted to score that goal. And I know him personally and how much you know a goal would mean to him and how much he loves playing for Ireland. It's like one of us playing for Ireland. He's that passionate about playing for his country. Um, and I, I actually sent him a text after the game just saying, well done. And he, he was laughing because I, I put it on my Instagram story or something and he was just he was just texting me that laughing. But uh, I was really, really happy for him. I, I, it's a shame that he couldn't maybe get a goal or a win to cap off that, that the man of the match thing. And we would kind of go through the second half now in a sec. But just kind of wanted to highlight him. But how are him? What did you make of him in that position? Yeah, I thought he did well. Because remember, without um, two recognised centre-backs, so we only had one effectively with Shane Duffy recognised centre-back, uh, it was important that the defence was protected. I think Connor did a fine job um, in the role, as you said. Uh, I don't think he's going to displace James McCarthy if he's fit, but he certainly is an option for the role because I, I, I wasn't convinced, and I don't think Harry Arthur is an option for that role. I'm not ruling Harry Arthur out of our midfield or out of the squad or the team, but I don't think he has the, the discipline to play the holding role. And... I, I think Connor performed it very well on uh, yesterday. So, yeah, he he definitely is an option. Um, the, the other man, the, the other option for that role at this stage, in I I think unfortunately, Glenn, I'm a big fan of Glenn Whelan, but I think his days are are over now. The other option is a man we only saw for a minute is Josh Cullen. So, who's he's a potential option for the future? But again, we need to get a proper look at him in the green shirt. But yeah, Connor. Uh, he, he has given Stephen another option, I think, coming out of yesterday's game, which is good to see. And obviously, Connor can play further forward. And, and you mentioned the set pieces as well, because I, I think that's actually hugely important. I know we're going to go on and talk about the goals and everything like that. But I think we either need to have Robbie Brady or Connor Horahan on the pitch for set pieces. At least one, if not both of them, on the pitch for set pieces. I think it's just uh, it, it's so crucial for us. And uh, so that that has to be borne in mind as well when you're, uh, I think, well, I, in my opinion, when you're picking any Irish side. Yeah, no, I agree. But um, maybe it's time for, for other players to step up to the mark as well and kind of see what their their um, set piece delivery is like as, as, as well. Because we don't know. We've only ever seen the two lads who are left footed. You know, I'm sure there's someone there with a right foot that could take them as well. But, um, you know, I have to just say as well, I thought Cyrus Christie done quite well in terms of he gave us another outlet going forward and he, his runs down the line make so many other opportunities for the likes of Robbie Brady, which, you know, I just want to, like, I'm just looking at the chances here that we kind of had and I had wrote down from the game yesterday. I mean, with the Shane Long header, which was offside, um, that was a good bit of play down the left-hand side, but Robbie Brady had a cross that nearly went in and that came from Cyrus Christie's run down the right and that allowed Robbie then to cut in on the left foot and whip a ball in. And it was a cross, like it wasn't a shot. Um, so I think I, I think that was happening n numerous times where Cyrus would go down the wing to allow Robbie to, to, to make the crosses. But in the first half, I wasn't happy with the way Brady was doing it. Maybe Stephen had a word and then he just started getting balls into the box a little bit more. Not that I want to be sounding like Nick McCarthy, apparently on commentary, kept going on about crosses or something like that. But anyway, we'll get into that. Um, I, I felt as though Brady got better in the second half. And and it just, just kind of on them as well, well, Wales, you know, playing up to everything, going down very easy, you know, claiming a penalty on Darren Randolph. You know, he tipped the ball off the player's head and he was claiming that he punched him. And I was just like, from where I was sitting, like they were claiming for penalties and everything like that. And I just, I actually, I mentioned to him on Instagram as well last night, not to keep name dropping, but I was I was saying to him, I was just like, he only patted him on the head and he said on the pitch that they, him and his teammates were claiming that he punched him. Like, that's how ridiculous uh, they were getting. They were going down at every attempt to try and get our players booked and ultimately that paid off, which we'll, we will come to after we talk about the substitutes that came on. Daryl Horgan and Sean, uh, Daryl Horgan and um, Sean McGuire came on for Robbie Brady and Shane Long and I thought, Shane Long 
kind of anonymous as well. But I thought the substitutions were on at a good time. That was in the 72nd minute. And from that point onwards, I thought Daryl Horgan came on looking really bright. But I'll let you talk about the Wales team first and what you kind of thought about that and then uh, Horgan. Yeah, so I, I didn't think it was a penalty either. I don't think, I mean, watching at home, I said, look, no way. I'm, I'm surprised, actually, there's still been a little bit made of it today. And a couple of people are saying, uh, it's more than Sky Sports now, admittedly, that uh, that we were maybe a little bit fortunate to get away without conceding a penalty. Um, but I don't know. It's there's no way, no way for me it was a penalty. And even though the VAR isn't in use in the Nations League, it, um, I think even with VAR and even with the crazy penalty decisions, some of them we're seeing in the Premier League, I can't see how that would have been given. Um, yeah, I, I don't know about the Welsh going down. Uh, I mean, you 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 do get a, a different view, Paul, and I appreciate a much better view in the stadium. And uh, in some ways, actually, I I hate to see football without fans, but there is an advantage for you sitting in the press box when there are no fans because you can hear a lot of the stuff that's going on in the pitch that you'd never hear if there was a crowd of 50,000 at the game. Um, But it didn't come across to me on the TV that that Wales were throwing themselves about or or diving or anything. I mean, they certainly put themselves about. You mentioned Kiefer Moore earlier on and that that, um, challenge on... On Kevin Long and uh, yeah, I mean it was it was reckless. It was a yellow card, so they were well able to put it or put it about themselves. And uh, I must say as well, I really, really feel sorry for Kevin Long because he was doing fine in there, and he would definitely have got the full ninety minutes. And uh, he must be devastated to to have had to go off after twenty five minutes because that was a great chance for him. Uh, and then you mentioned Shane Long. Um, and Shane Long did get a great chance. He had what seventy? I think we just said seventy-seven minutes. So you have the notes on when when seventy-two, um, the, 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 seventy-two minutes. Um, I I don't think Shane um, did enough uh, or did that much in the seventy-two minutes. Now it was a difficult game, and he's a different different t- style striker maybe to what Stephen wants to play with. But um, and maybe he's more suited to coming off the bench now as an impact player. But I I don't think Shane Long did enough in the seventy two minutes to cause uh, to cause a problem for Stephen. Probably a nice problem because I don't think there'll be too many arguing now that Shane should be starting ahead of Didsy um, or, or or even Adamida in the in in the upcoming games. I mean, who starts in in Helsinki anyway? That's for another day. But I yeah, I don't think Shane did enough. He had one great chance as as we talked about early in the second half with the header, and he didn't he didn't put it on target. And uh, that that was I think uh, possibly probably was our best opportunity to score. Um, Daryl Horgan did well when he came on. It was a small enough cameo. Uh, um, as you said, 18 minutes. Um, but he got involved. He had he had a great chance. He actually had an effort blocked double and then chance, yeah. had a second go double chance, had a second go at it, and uh at least made um Hennessy actually and the defender block stop the ball or stop him scoring. So yeah, I think he's an option. Obviously, Stephen knows exactly what Daryl Horgan can do. And uh yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in um feature in future squads. Um, it's uh, certainly he gave another option as a, as an impact player again off the bench as someone who could change a game in the last ten or fifteen minutes. So I don't think he did himself any harm. Yeah, I think he gave Stephen something to think about, especially for the Finland game, and because he came off the bench and he was direct and he ran at them and he, he had a couple of chances. But the only other chance that we had was a Jeff Hendrick shot, which was you know. More of a pass back than anything else. Um, just had no power on it. It was, um, you know, the idea was right, but you need to be, you need, you need to be getting more power on them shots from there if you want to be. I think it was he- Wayne Hennessy in goal for them. Um, yeah, you know, Premier League keeper with Palace. So anyway, he may be a reserve keeper now, but like, um, he's still decent enough and has been around a long time. You need to be hitting hitting shots with with good power to be beating him from there, and then. Kind of in and around that time, James McLean gets a yellow card. And, you know, I had a TV monitor in front of me and kind of seen the replay. And what he was trying to say was he didn't see, the, fir- the on the first tackle, he didn't see the player. He was running for the ball. 
the player ran and it caught his heel as he was running. And you could kind of see that in the replay that he probably wasn't trying to actually go for it, as, as frustrated as he probably was. But then the second one, he, he in my, I, I don't know now if if it came up on the TV, but it seemed like he had won a foul and then followed through on Ampadu in the same kind of situation. So he'd won a foul, it looked like to me, because I heard the ref blow the whistle, and then decided to go for another tackle and then gets a yellow. And that's the second yellow, and he's off. And this is what people are always saying about James McLean is, oh, he gives it all the heart and he gives it all that. But at times he can be a liability. And I remember in 2017, um, you know, qualifying, and there was games against Serbia and stuff like that, and he'd be just firing into tackles to try and get the crowd up. Sometimes you don't need that. Now, there was no crowd there yesterday. But needlessly diving in on challenges that he just doesn't need to. Like, that wasn't that around the halfway line area, the second tackle. And I know Ampadu was in his ear because he was trying to get him a yellow card the first time. You could see him having a go at him. And then he gets sent off for the second yellow by going for a challenge that he just didn't need to do. And that effectively ruled out any other chance of any other sub coming on, most notably... Everyone wanted to see Jack Byrne on, and there was absolute outrage all over the internet because he didn't come on. The funniest thing is, uh, and I think this is, is mad, if, if Jack Byrne was playing down the road, Tala, half these people calling out for him wouldn't even go watch him. Yeah, so there's a few things there. Um, so I actually did think the first, first yellow card was a yellow card. I, James can say he didn't mean it. I don't think he deliberately mean he meant to, to stamp in the guy's heel, but it was, it was careless. Now I wouldn't be too critical of the first yellow card. Look, I mean, yellow cards happen. Guys pick up yellow cards, okay, and and James will pick up yellow cards because, uh, as you mentioned, the style of player he is, and and it's a tough one because if you if you if you take if you ta- I, I don't know if you tame him, calm him down, then maybe you lose a lot of that as well. And uh, but so I, I thought the referee was right with the first yellow card, but James was clearly frustrated. And unfortunately, when you get a yellow card, and uh, particularly with continental referees, um, you have to be careful. And the second one was reckless. And I mean, I think he had he had lost the head a bit. And the problem is, you mentioned 2017, James was our standout player, I mean, uh, at the time. And he, he was just, uh, not just the Serbia game, he, he got the winner in Cardiff, had a great game that night. He got the winner the year before in Vienna, a superb win in Vienna uh, against a really good Austrian team. I mean, he was probably the standout player of that campaign, actually, the 2018 World Cup campaign, and played really well. And uh, I suppose he's probably there, frustrated. There was, yeah, yeah. No, Gary, I'm not saying I'm not saying he didn't do well, but I'm saying there was periods throughout those games that everyone was like, "Oh, you know, James McLean gets a red or a yellow card earlier on, we'd be afraid of him getting sent off." That has been a thing that that has been around for for a while now. A lot of people are weary of him. like he was a standout player for that campaign. I'm not saying that, and I think he was a top goal scorer, you know, two, and he was brilliant. Just the time when we wore this jersey, um, yeah, he was fantastic then. But as well, he always has this thing where he just rash into tackles that just doesn't need to. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, that's and now it is the first time he was sent off. So I mean, uh, I I don't like to be too critical of players picking up a the, the odd yellow card, but when you do pick up the yellow card, you do need to be careful. I mean, Jerry and I were talking on uh, in the watch along about Kiefer Moore. He got the yellow card so early, and he is a big bruising centre forward and uh, someone who was likely to pick up a second one. No, he didn't, and he was very careful, but maybe Wales lost something of him as well. He wasn't, probably wasn't, maybe it didn't, wasn't as effective as he had been in previous games. He got the winner, I think, in Helsinki for them. Um, so I, I suppose James, having just got the yellow card, was reckless with the challenge, and some of it might come back to the fact that he, he's probably lost his place in, uh, in the Irish starting eleven now. I mean, well, he certainly lost it for Helsinki because he's suspended. But I think nearly everybody, and probably Stephen, will have um, Aaron Connolly uh, starting on the left ahead of him, or well, maybe an option of Aaron on, on the right, even a Robbie Brady on the left, or something like that. So um, maybe there was just there was pent up frustration as as part of that. I don't know, but. Um, yeah, you said you said it costs us the chance of seeing Jack Bourne. Um, 
you, you couldn't be right. Costs a chance of getting a, it also costs a chance of getting any sort of a win as well. That cost us any chance of winning the game. Now, I don't think we were... Well, I think the game looked like it was heading for a scoreless draw from 15, 20 minutes out at least. But if anyone was going to win the game, we were going to win it, I think, at that point, up until when James was sent off. And as soon as he was sent off, you're thinking, we don't deserve to lose this game, but God, just don't lose it. No, just hang on and finish it out at nil-nil. And we did. And uh, I thought we saw it out comfortably. And, and certainly Stephen's thinking with the substitution then, he brought on Josh Cullen, which was clearly a case of shoring things up, just being careful. We're down to 10 men. Josh will sit in front of the back four. We'll just settle for a point, which obviously was the right thing to do when you're down to 10 men. It probably cost us any chance of seeing Jack Byrne, who is someone, had we been a goal down with 20 minutes to go, maybe he would have come on. Personally, I'd have liked to have seen Jack come on at least for half an hour. Um, mm. Had James not been sent off, even th that was with, what, 10 minutes to go? Even if he, Stephen was thinking of bringing Jack on at that point, I don't know what Jack could really have done in those 10 minutes. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's very hard to make such an impression in, in a 10-minute cameo. So I was hoping he'd get at least half an hour. I really hope he gets uh, time in Helsinki. No. I know it's dividing opinion, and, and some of it is, it's a funny one, because I, I, I'm seeing a lot of negativity around Stephen Kenny, and there's some people who want to be down on Stephen Kenny, and a lot of the League of Ireland fans are the ones defending him, and then when a lot of the League of Ireland fans are calling for the likes of Jack Byrne, which... Well, I don't see it as a as a. I, I'm not trying to be critical of Stephen because I, I I actually think he's going to be a fine manager for us, but um, it's just something like to see. The, the same people are saying, "Well, Stephen's dead right not to pick Jack. He's only in the League of Ireland. That's absolute rubbish. There's um, we should be picking players only from the the Premier League or whatever, you know." So. Um, I don't know. It's perhaps perhaps a divide among Irish football fans as well, you know. And I mean. But certainly I'd like to see Jack given, given a chance because we don't have a player of that, that ilk or that style otherwise, you know. And uh, maybe he'll get his chance if we're... I don't want to see us go goal down, obviously. But um, if we were chasing the game in Helsinki, maybe he'd get, uh, get a chance then because he obviously is very much uh, an attack-minded player, a player who will pick out a pass. And uh, we haven't scored a goal now in three games. So that's, I mean, if Jack picks out a pass, gets a, he can score himself as well. He's got, um, he scored some superb goals for Rovers, but uh, can pick out, pick out a pass to find somebody in a good position and maybe get a, get that goal. Yeah. Well, I'm in total agreement with you about Jack and I would like to see him get on. Um, the, the biggest elephant in the room here is obviously the fact that it's another game gone by without any goals and our only goal under Steven so far has been the Shane Duffy late goal against Bulgaria in the in his first game and while for me it's not really a concern but you can see a lot of fans online negatively reacting to the fact that we haven't scored goals but I think there's this certain and I heard Richie Sadler saying it earlier on um, on Twitter on the second second captain's podcast is that there's people who just believe in one identity of playing football. It's, you know, long ball. You know, if it's this new form of football, it's ridiculous. There's a lot of people out there who think that football should just be hit a log and run and hope for the best. There's still a lot of people out there, unfortunately, that are like that. There's a lot that aren't too. But these types of people are the ones that are calling for Stevens and all. Oh, the football's no better. I actually had a fellow tweet me yesterday saying the football is no better then pre Stephen Kenny, it's no better at all. It's like watching paint dry. I have to say, I've although we're not scoring goals, I've really enjoyed the way we are playing. And people go, oh, well, the style of play doesn't win your games. Well, in the long run, it does. But ultimately, you need to score goals. You need to put balls in the net to win games. And Shane Duffy came out and said it in the press conference after the game, you know, goals win games. And fortunately, we just haven't scored enough yet. But we feel as though it's coming and we do feel as though you know, I feel as though the players are adapting really well, you know, really positive to, positively, sorry, to the way we play. 
And I think once we kind of maybe get one goal or two goals, I think we might then start seeing a bit of a free flow. I'm not saying that we're going to be you know, hammering teams 5-6-0 every week, but you could see us getting that little bit of luck rather than just relying on Shane Duffy for same set pieces and defend, defend, defend the whole game and then hope to try and nick a, you know, a jammy free kick or something like that, which has been the way under Martin and, and, and Mick the last five years, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, you can go back even further. If you want to go back to the days of Giovanni Trapattoni, I mean, uh, we weren't we weren't very good to watch then. Uh, Trap, we were very solid at the back, and he was very fortunate to have Robbie Keane, who has without doubt been our greatest ever goal scorer, 68 goals for his country. And I mean, there was a lot of games we won with uh, solid defence and a Robbie Keane goal. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a striker um, like Robbie Keane. I wish Erling Haaland or someone like that was Irish. But anyway, uh, so the the style of football, yeah, I, I'm not uh, uh, as concerned about... I, I agree, I think the goals, goals will come. And uh, unfortunately, we're probably never going to be that prolific. We weren't that prolific under Mick McCarthy either. And in the latter days of Martin O'Neill... We had we had a lot of trouble scoring goals as well, and uh, but we are playing we're playing good football. We're playing better football. We're passing the ball. I don't think our games have been that entertaining to watch. They haven't been great games, uh, and that can often be the way. I mean, you you can watch Pep Guardiola's Barcelona or Man City, and sometimes it can be very boring, even though they, they, they the way they pass the ball is superb. So we're definitely playing. Uh, a better style of football, a lot more pleasing on the eye. Uh, um, yeah, the goal scoring is a problem, but I, we'll g- I'll give you another stat because if you go back into the Finland game in Dublin for over an hour, um, I think they, they scored reasonably early. So we kept a, a clean sheet for the last hour, two hours in Slovakia, another hour and a half on um, yesterday. So what's that? That's four and a half hours without conceding a goal. And, Definitely, I've noticed our defence looks a lot tighter and a lot stronger uh, in these two games. And and that's something that Stephen has clearly worked on. And I mean, he's only had four games as a manager and he's had so much to deal with, with COVID and everything and all the players being withdrawn. So it's certainly, I think, it's a very good positive that we're... Um, we're much harder to score against. We're much tighter at the back. We don't look like conceding goals. I mean, we can't really talk about Darren Randolph's performance yesterday, apart from one one good save. But um, mm-hmm. because he didn't, he he very little to do. And uh, so the positives are we're definitely uh, much tighter at the back. We are playing good football. We are playing a better style of football. And I think it's a style of football Stephen probably wants to to bring right through the underage setups. I know we've talked about that before. And I mean, and another example, I, I know I'm, I'm going on about this a little bit, but I'm actually very impressed with Wales in the way Ryan Giggs did this. And uh, he was fortunate in that he had friendly matches and a time away in China to work with the younger players but he's instigated a style of football he wants Wales to play and he's discarded many of the stars they had for 2016 but and he's doing it right through the whole Welsh underage setup so someone comes into Wales in the under 15s they're going to play a certain way they've they're many of them are English born but their their Welsh identity has been um, I, I don't know what way to indoctrinate Trinated certainly into them as well, and uh, they're they're doing things really well, and they're, they're getting the results on the pitch. They've already qualified for the Euros, etc. And I think that's what Stephen is trying to uh, to copy and imitate here. And uh, I think he will be successful. Just give him time, and it's very difficult doing it with competitive matches. And uh, that's probably why we didn't see so many changes. Um, well, maybe we'd no choice with any changes, but I don't think we would have seen uh, too much experimentation uh, yesterday. And I don't think we'll see too many experiments on Wednesday as well because it's a competitive match. I think he will try to, to get a result as well. Yeah, sorry about all that moving around. My my battery was low, so I just put a charger into the, into the phone there. Um, yeah, uh, 
I, I would like to see a little bit of experience because you know, we know that he's bringing in a lot of his under 21 players. So that might be a thing that he might say, look, you know what the way to play a bit more. And you never know. A couple of them could come in. I'd say someone like maybe Dara O'Shea could come in and play centre back alongside Shane Duffy. If Matt Doherty could do it, I think Dara has the kind of maturity to do it. You know, he's come in, he's played every game in the Premier League for West Brom so far and seems quite trusted. And very level-headed as well. Doesn't seem to really let the occasion get to him. So I think he'd be a solid addition in cent- in centre back. Um, I don't want to give away my starting eleven show too much because I still have to do it. But I think I think I'd like to see some of his under twenty one players drafted in, and I would like to see Jack Byrne at some point given a run because otherwise, you know, he must be he must be really annoyed if he's looking around and these players get drafted in, they get picked ahead of him, and he must be saying, "What more? You know, what more can I do?" You know, I've 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 came here. I've I'm sure he's been exemplary to all the other players. Like he's just been a really good professional about it and tried to get himself into the team somehow. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like does he bring in the young players or does he go with the Howard and Hen- Hendrick McCarthy midfield tree? You wonder. And then up front, you know, does he go with Adam Eda, Ronan Curtis is there as well. Um, there's other players there as well that have been drafted into. So uh, uh, does Ryan Manning play left back? Lots of uh, openings there if if he wants to have a look. Yeah, there's a lot of people actually. Um, I'd, I'd like to get a look at Ryan Manning as well. He's probably been a bit unfortunate that he hasn't made some squads in the past. Um, Adamida started Stephen's first two games. I mean, I think we all had did he expected to start in uh, in Bratislava anyway. So I, I I would expect Adam to start uh, on Wednesday. But again, I don't want to be preempting what you think. Uh, Darrow Shea, yeah, I mean Darrow Shea is actually a centre back. I know he's played full back a lot for West Brom. So I would expect him to play certainly ahead of Matt Doherty. If you're ta- if you're talking about Darrow Shea or Matt Doherty for centre back, it, it has to be Darrow Shea. I'm a little bit disappointed that he, and it's a tough one that he's taken so many players from the under 21s because I really want to see our under 21s qualify for a major tournament. And uh, I think we would have had a far better chance of beating Italy. And I see Italy are going to be sh- playing virtually an under 20 side now. And uh, with, a, God, with a sprinkle he, of, uh, of Italian internationals, too. Oh, look, Italy, you're never going to face a weak Italian side. I mean, that's going to be incredibly strong still. Yeah. But yeah. obviously, the, the, the players we're missing, the likes of Darrow Shea, Jason Knight, etc., are are going to be a huge loss to Jim Crawford. And, uh, well, you know, I, I appreciate the senior side is to take priority, but just we've never qualified for an under-21 tournament and we have a fantastic chance. But that's that's for another day anyway. So, yeah, I mean, Stephen had great success with those players at under-21 level. And uh, he may be thinking and looking at Ryan Giggs and saying, well, he got Ryan got rid of the Chris Gunters and the James Chesters and all that, and uh, look at him now, so why not? Why not? You know, um, I don't know. It's uh, It will be interesting. And uh, uh, good luck trying to predict the starting 11 on Wednesday because I, I certainly I don't think I'd get it right anyway. We, uh, there's your challenge to see how many you can get right. Well, I do it in the team that I would like to see, not so much the team that Steve would pick. Okay. But I haven't been far off now. If Aaron Carney hadn't missed out against Slovakia, I would have been on the money with that one. But uh, I think that team picked itself, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I think, you look, uh, if you had said to me before the game that we were going to draw 0-0, I would have taken it. So the fact that but I felt as though we should have won, I was a bit disappointed at the end of the game. But I'm very optimistic, even still with the depleted squad, Going into this Finland game, I really think we we can get a result, and we'll do a preview on that as well, I'm sure. But yeah, I'm just confident going into this now. But I think we'll we'll leave it on that matter, um, and obviously we'll we'll have a final word, or sorry, a preview on the Finland game as well, and we can we can chat about that then as well on the on the preview. So listen, uh, Gary, thanks very much for joining me. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. And uh, yeah, anyone who's watching or listening, maybe on podcasts. Don't forget to give this video, uh, our video yet, yeah, our podcast, a like, a subscribe, and uh, try and get us to nine thousand subscribers on YouTube. We're almost there, so if you could please subscribe, especially if you're a returning watcher and you haven't subscribed, but you like the videos. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll speak to you all soon. Take care.